Uh, let me figure out a mirror. One second. I'll pause. Do you want to know the hotkey to mirror the screen? Because I can't. Thanks. I'll just roll this way. I can see it. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Del Spoonmore. I'm a software developer at Surgical Care Affiliates, and I have a side app called From Sea to Spoon that makes gardening easy. So I built my app in Ionic version 3 originally, and that was three years ago. And honestly, I didn't really know what I was doing back then, um, and the app had a lot of issues that were kind of under the hood, and we decided to rewrite the app this year in Ionic 4. And it was an amazing experience, and I want to talk about that here. So um, what I want to do is actually show the process of getting started with Ionic and building an app. So hopefully we'll have enough time to do this. Um, here we go. So uh, once you have Ionic installed, you can just do Ionic start and then the name of what you're wanting to call it. And then you can choose a framework. So I'm going to go with Angular. And then you can choose the template that you want. I'm going to choose conference. And instead of waiting for this thing to install, I've already got it over here. So. This is an instance where, sorry. Okay, uh, are y'all seeing that? Cool, so this is an instance that is already installed. So <laughs> once it's installed, to, to get it going, you just simply do Ionic Serve, and this will launch a web browser that will uh, render what, what your app in a browser. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, because really what I wanna focus on are the changes from Ionic 3 to 4 because this is where things really change in getting the app onto the device because it was a pain in the butt before. Cordova, if you haven't dealt with it, it was a nightmare. You would get random errors that didn't really make sense and it would take a weekend of trying to figure it out. And um, what Ionic did is they got rid of, they, they, they replaced Cordova with their own thing called Capacitor. So now instead of using Cordova to build out an iOS or an Android app, it renders an, an, an iOS and an Android project within the Ionic project that lives there so you're not rebuilding it each time. So let me show you how simple it is to get um, here. So this is the browser window. It opened over here so y'all couldn't see that. So this is the browser window of that conference app that we just installed. So you can see here, this is running in a browser. And um, if I go back now and try and get it on a device, let me show you how easy that is. Okay, so MPX cap open iOS. So MPX is the shortcut for capacitor. MPX cap, that's a command to get to it. And this is all it takes now to get the app opening into Xcode. And from here, it's a native Xcode project. So the reason why this is such a game changer is before, if you wanted to add an integration or something, you had to do it in a config file in an Ionic. And if something went wrong there, you had to go through all the Cordova logs to figure out where it choked and what went wrong. And now, with everything being native in the project, you don't have to deal with that anymore. So this is the app that we just started, now in Xcode, and all I have to do is run it from here, and please work. <laughs> <laughs> Every other time it's worked when I tried it today, so. Can we get a drum roll? Please. Still going. I can. I see it doing I'm things still hopeful. in the background. I'm hopeful. There we go. Clap. So, so it's that simple to go from start to iOS, and this really removes the barrier uh, that caused a lot of problems in the past. So I'm almost out of time. I'm sure. So I will end there. Thanks, everyone.